I love every single opportunity that I have to stand before people and talk about Jesus. I mean, it's what he has called me to do. Um, I'm very thankful for Tanner's testimony. He left. I love the guy. Um, my testimony um, of how I came to Christ is a lot like his, um, except it took me a lot longer to come to know Jesus. Matter of fact, I was 32 years old. And uh, the irony behind what I'm going to talk about tonight is that before I knew Jesus, the only thing I would stand for was to get up out of a bar stool and go to another bar. But thankfully, Jesus did something amazing in my life. Um, like I said, 32 years old, he revealed himself to me through the word, and he radically changed everything. Um, and he spoke to me in my heart, and he told me he had things for, for me to do. And he called me to ministry. He called me to proclaim his goodness to the world around me. He gave me a purpose that I did not have before. Um, and I'm just so thankful for that. Because I was lost, and I felt worthless. And now, I belong to him. And I don't have to feel hopeless and worse, worthless anymore. So a couple of things that, that have happened since he's called me to be a herald of his gospel are, number one, like I said, he called me to ministry. Uh, I started going to school. I recently just graduated from Colorado Christian University with my undergraduate in biblical studies um, to help equip me to go out and preach to the world around me. Um, and to minister. Um, he has called me to work with students, which most of you know, and I, I have a passion for helping you guys to walk closely with the Lord, to help draw you near to him and help flush his gospel out in your lives and what it looks like. Um, he's called me to do some pretty radical and amazing things. He called me to go halfway across the world to India with one other person to go and do some pastors' conferences, equip and encourage pastors in India that have hardly any kind of Bible material. Um, most of them don't even have a Bible in the language that they speak. They have to learn, pastors have to learn another language so they can read the Bible and preach to people and teach. So I got to go and do that. And I also got to do some humanitarian aid while I was there. We cared for the poor. We cared for the needy. We cared for people who had next to nothing. And I also got to evangelize and preach the gospel in a country that you can be put in jail you could be persecuted and killed by non-believers. And I got to stand there and preach to people that had never heard the word of Jesus Christ. Pretty amazing. I've been blessed to go to Mexico with our church here at Vista Grande and make a stand for Jesus in that way. We got to build houses for people who needed homes. I got to stand in front of groups of people and teach them about Jesus. All these things are amazing, and they sound like a very bold stand, and they sound that, like they're probably the most awesome things that I've got to do for Jesus, but they're not. The most awesome thing that I've got to do for Jesus, most people probably would say it's the most insignificant. I get to do it pretty often, though, and I'll give you the most recent example. I recently changed jobs about a year and a half ago, um, working for the same company but doing a different role. And in this role, I got to know this guy named Mike. That's one of my coworkers. Now, I work from home. I get to see Mike maybe three times a year, but I talk to him every day. And through the past year and a half, Mike's got to know a lot about me, and I've got to know 
a lot about Mike. Mike was a former Marine, pretty rough around the edges, pretty lewd, says some pretty lewd comments most of the time, likes to use profanity, he drinks a lot, he um, was into some occult stuff, like kind of like we were talking about earlier, some magic stuff, like the people of Ephesus, right? And one day, Mike tells me, he says, you know, Blake, I've really tried not to use profanity around you. I'm like, huh, okay. Why is that, Mike? He said, well, I know, I notice, right? You, you don't use profanity like all the rest of us do. So I kind of felt weird when I would use it around you. And he said, you know, I noticed some, some different things about you. I notice that you're not all about going out and getting drunk like the rest of us are. He said, I notice you really care about your family and the things that are important to you are other people. He said, you know, I, I, I feel like I'm important to you. I said, well, you know, Mike, I appreciate you sharing that with me. He said, what is it? What, why, why do you do this? Why do you not use profanity? Why don't you go out drinking? Why do you treat people differently? Why do you respect people and love them? And I got in that moment to talk to Mike about Jesus and the difference that Jesus has made in my life. And it, it was awesome. It was like one of the most amazing conversations. I got to tell him about who I was before, a drunk, a bad father, a horrible friend. And then I got to tell him about how I came to know Jesus and what Jesus has done in my life and that he's impacted my heart so much that I can't help but be different, that I can't help but to be an imitator of him every day of my life. Mike was pretty blown away about that conversation. You know, he hasn't come to the point that he's accepted Jesus, but he's made huge strides in that direction. And I can't help but think, you know, it's the difference that Christ made in me that helped Mike see who he really was, to see who Jesus really was. Mike told me just recently, he said, you know, you're probably my best friend. And I don't even get to see this guy but three times a year. We talk over the phone. We talk on a, a text, uh, on an on a, um, instant messenger window. And I'm probably Mike's best friend. But you know what? Mike doesn't have to wonder if I care about him or if I love him. And I'm sure he probably worries, wonders about that with most, most relationships in his life. So... While it may seem insignificant, it's a huge victory. Mike's getting to hear about Jesus. He's getting to see Jesus just from the impact that Jesus has made on me. And my challenge to you is to think about it this way. Yeah, while you, you could go maybe preach in front of thousands, right? You could maybe go preach in front of tens of thousands. If you're not impacting their lives and reaching them in their hearts, then, like Paul says, it's just a, you're a noisy gong, a clangy gong. But if you go out and you find one person, and you love that person genuinely, and you care about that person genuinely, and you want to share Jesus with that person just because you care about them and love them, I guarantee you, you'll have an impact on their lives. One person. You know what the Bible says about one sinner that repents? One sinner that repents from their sin? There's more rejoicing in heaven than 99 righteous that enter. My challenge to you is I want you to go. You let Jesus impact your heart. You live his word out in your life. And you care for the people that he's put in your life. 
That's the challenge. That's your stand. Let's make it happen. Thank you.